work did you have to do to get a consensus for how to completely change the work environment that has been in place for 60 years? One of the challenges the UN has, which is much different than many corporate entities have, is that they have a fixed piece of real estate. It's a singular asset. They can't really go beyond that for the most part. And how does one respond to that in a way where you can keep everyone whole and safe within those boundaries without going beyond those boundaries? And the strategy that we all looked at was how do we effectively look at a mechanism where we can keep people internally, yet provide them with the tools that they're looking for. Most of the folks at the UN would demand more conference space. They would demand better qualities of life infrastructure, of cooling. And the only way to achieve that is to do it internally and to upgrade the building in a way that we can provide them with other amenities that they wouldn't have today. So I always use the discussion about if you take something away, you have to give something back then some. And what they're getting back now is then some. They're getting a lot more than they ever had. And you know, the, the, the test of that was when we moved them into swing space out of the UN. Um, one of the project managers from the UN held a help desk. And he was expecting all kinds of chaos when, when people were moving in to talk about what didn't work and they were not happy about their open workstations and and at the end of the day, he said, I had lines of people outside my office saying, wow, this is much better. I'm with the people I can work with. It was air conditioning. And I see light. It's going to be beautiful light. Michael, is there anything you'd like to add before we? For a long story. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think the, the, the UN culture is a consensus driven culture. Decision making. Uh, is really, uh, they never vote, they very rarely vote on anything. If, if, if you oppose something strong enough, you stop it. So when it comes to something as, uh, as, some, as far into the UN as architecture, they don't know where to stop. There's no particular member state uh, whose toes are being stepped on. It's sort of a joint stepping on many toes. <laughs> so, so I think it's, it, it, it has allowed the project to proceed and do some very radical changes based upon uh, the input that we get from you know, our team. And the UN doesn't stop it because it doesn't really know, the, it doesn't really have individuals that are able to say that it's really not going to work that way. So we, we are able to do a lot of changes just by pushing forward. And, uh, and the project went forward. We're moving very quickly. And everyone sort of supports that because you say it, it, it's less expensive as you move quickly. So with the project's moving quickly and we're, 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 we're bringing the UN along. With us. It doesn't sound like democracy, but it sounds like it's working. You have never claimed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much.